of your precious holy word. Father, we receive with joy. We receive with joy. We receive this word with gladness and joy. And Father God, our, our natural man ain't going to block the spirit man. The spirit man going to show us into our destiny, which is great by God. So we thank you, Heavenly Father, this wonderful day for the rhema word and the devil is all bound up, rendered inoperable, off limits, have no authority, because everybody in this room is healed. Everybody in this house is healed. On top in every area. Special by God. So thank you, Father, for your word. And we speak this thing boldly. As a result of you being here, there's increase in your days, which is called long life, good life, blessed life. And we speak this in Jesus' name. Jesus name. All right, now let me see your Bible. This is my Bible. I am what the word says I am. I have what the word says I have. And I certainly can do, absolutely can do, what the word says I can do. Today I'm going to learn, because my mind is alert, my heart is fertile, I desire to learn, therefore I will learn, I will never be the same, I will never, never, never be the same, as a result of God's indestructible ever-living, Ever dynamic, dynamic. Incorruptible. incorruptible, the seed of life, seed of life. The, word of God. the word of God, I boldly receive, I, boldly receive. I, refuse, to be the same. I refuse to be the same, in Jesus' name, in Jesus name. Amen. amen. You may be seated. We want to welcome everybody that is streaming with us. We got a great word for you that's going to help your life, and uh, you're going to be blessed as a result of it. And so uh, today, I'm, our second teaching on uh, seeing eyes. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Seeing eyes. In other words, spiritual eyes, the ability to see into the spirit, the ability that God has given us since we've been born again, to be able to override the powers of darkness. Do they exist? Yes, they do. To be able to uh, release out of your spirit what God say, the powers of darkness, and keep the promise of God in place. That's a foundational thing that you learn the promises and stay with the word and be able to see what God is saying. Having authority. If you can't see you have authority, you ain't going to walk in authority. And having uh, power over the devil and all his demons. And that's what Satan did. When he got kicked out, he was a fallen angel. So you have particular angels, demonic angels, that got kicked out with him. So many that we can't even count. Uh, and they have particular demonic spirits that emulate from them to try to, to, to mess with our mind and speak to their mind. It's just like right now as we sit here, all kind of birds are flying over, but we got something to do with letting them land on us. And so and with demonic spirits, they exist, and sometimes, listen carefully, sometimes we as people are coexisting with demons and don't even know it. And so what I want to do is kind of clear that up so we're not coexisting with no demon. You go to sleep, he go to sleep too. Well, demons don't sleep, but he in your house. You lay down and say, I'll be here right here when you wake up. And we want to make certain that we eliminate that kind of behavior. And so isn't this something? You, you know, you could be a person in any operation in ministry coexisting with a demon. Everybody in here has been affected by a demon before. And some people keep it. That's how repeat behavior happens again and again. Why do you keep doing the same thing? Because a lot of times it's a demonic spirit that has entered into your life, and you don't know how to get that fool out. And so what we want to do is be able to learn about this thing today, seeing eyes, so we can see the ability we have to be able to discern and see the powers of darkness that wants to control our soul and our mind, keep us from the precious promises of God. God said his promises are precious. Man, you know it's a lot of religious churches, they ain't teaching the people the promises, it's just a verse. But they don't know how to access that. And you are being taught all the time how to access what your daddy promised. Isn't that a wonderful thing? And then having authority. Y'all, I mean, everybody here, I say you got authority. Everybody have authority. But you can say that and read a verse, but it's learning how to walk in it and have it consistent in your life. Then, then you know, just the devil and these demons that, that affect us. Now, Jesus does a great teaching. Now, let's start this thing off this way. Because sometimes we think we just have a... Uh, I just want to make a decision. I want to do that. I don't do nothing that God say don't do. 
ain't nothing. If God tell me to do something, it's, if God, everybody look at me. If God tell you to do something or something that God speak to me for you to do, that means he provided you the ability to do it. But if you already stopped and blocked by some demons, the minute the Holy Spirit starts speaking to you, you know, this is my will. That's the problem. You got a will. You got a desire. But that thing can be completely asphyxiated by demonic spirits. And so you never end up doing anything. You come here, but you never cooperate with the things I tell you. And God is speaking directly to you. God said, how in the world are you praying for me? And I got a man in living color you won't listen to. So we have to get off of New Age Christianity and, and the will of a man and get over to the will of God. Amen. Okay, now, everybody go to Luke 11. Let's look at Jesus here. Luke chapter 11. As you go in there, we're going to take a look at a, a general concept, and we're going to break it down, and we're going to, get the, we're going to expose these demons coexisting with a demon. Everybody look at me. There's a scripture in James 4, 7. It says, resist the devil, he'll flee. But if you allow a demon to come in your life, you'll be saying, I rebuke him. He said, where you going? I ain't going nowhere if you ain't going. We tied each other. And so do you know that a massive amount of Christians are into that, that they may be coexisting with a demonic spirit, and they think they just got a right to do what they want to do, but it's a demon controlling the situation. So we're going to expose him today. I said, we're exposing him today. Now, go to Luke 11, everybody. Jesus is doing a powerful teaching in general about the eyes that you have. And uh, starting at uh, verse 33, 11, Luke 11, 23, I'm reading the New King James. And he starts by saying, no one, when he has lit a lamp, put it in a secret place or under a basket, but on a lamp stand that those who are come in may see the light. Those that come in may see the light. Now, everybody look at me. He's talking about the light is really the, the seeing eyes, the Holy Spirit. And your life is that lamp pulse. Verse 34. The lamp of the body is the eyes. The lamp of the body is what? The eyes. So those eyes are what? The Holy Spirit, the spirit, the seeing eyes. Therefore, when your eyes is good, your whole body also is filled with a uh, full of light. Correct. When your eye, when your light is good. Right. When your spirit man is connected to the Holy Spirit. What does it say? The, the lamp of the body is the eyes. Therefore, when your eyes is good, your whole body also is filled with light. But when your eyes is bad, everybody say bad eyes. Now, what does that denote? It denotes your spirit. That means some kind of way Satan has gotten into you and mess up your spirit. So you're not able to function. Your soul is so overwhelming that your spirit, man, ain't free to receive and hear. So every time something, watch this. Every time you hear something, you got to process it through the natural mind. That's the soul. But when, the, when your heart is good, every time you hear something, you process it through the spirit. And then you ain't got to wait. He do the hearing. In the natural man, you got to do the hearing. You got to coincide that hearing the way we were raised with the five senses. And you got to learn how to cut that off because you, you'll get to the place where you think you're hearing God. You ain't hearing God at all. It's nothing you can't do. God said, if I be for you, who can be against you? You have to learn. And, and people hear from, from ages and they're not learning. You're just sitting here religiously. You got to be aggressive about this. I said it in first service. If you want to correct somebody, at least study what you're trying to correct somebody with. You don't study it yourself, but you got a word. Keep your word, because your word is watered down. I want a fresh word by the Holy Spirit. Am I talking clearly? Let's go back to this body. And he say, he say now, he say now in verse 34. That's where I'm at, right? No, I read 34, 35. Therefore, take heed that the light which is in you, the light where is what? Is not dark. If then the whole body is Full of light, having no part in darkness. If you're light, if you're full of light, the spirit, you have no part in. So that means now you have the ability to walk by faith. And when darkness comes, you say, I rebuke that in Jesus name. All right, everybody watch this. Here's the thought. Boom. Hit your mind. If you're if you're over into the spirit mind immediately, I rebuke that in Jesus name. You don't sit there and contemplate. Well, maybe that's so. That means like you're like a child. Child got to contemplate what they know is right. 
We're not trying to know what's right as we know uh, out of the earth's soulish division, but we're talking about the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is in you. And he said, and the Holy Spirit will come in and he'll teach you all truth. That's how I operate. I don't have to, I hear something, I got a pro let me think about it. That's why you're missing it. You're thinking instead of being led. So you got to begin to cultivate your spirit mind, spirit mind, spirit mind, so you can get off of you and get on to him. And, uh, you know, it's like, watch this. It says, here, here's a, here's a simple example, Proverbs 14. It says, the lazy man desire to have. You, want, you think having stuff, but you don't have nothing. But the diligent he makes rich. The walk that we're in is a daily walk. You don't get it because you didn't heard a little bit about the Bible. So you've been heard some, but you ain't learned how to fight with what you heard yet. You still led by your flesh and think it's got something to do with God. So we have to, it's a cultivation, a cultivation, a cultivation. All right, like right now, I said, have you fought, have you fought uh, 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 this person? No. Well, you know, before you can fight the heavyweight, you got to fight the middleweight. We still can't, we still struggling with just basic living. I mean, really struggling at it. The minute the devil tell you you got it and don't got it, you're in a struggle. You got to know that I got it all the time. Yeah. And just because you got it, I ain't got to spend it. Anybody with me? Yeah. Just because you got it, you ain't got to spend it. Well, I got this in the bank. Well, when you still a babe, you got to spend it because there's unfil unfulfilled desires. Mm -hmm. We can't have no unfulfilled desires. Yeah. All our desires got to be met. They already met by the promise. All right, where did I stop at? 35, y'all ain't even listen to me. Verse 35, therefore take heed that the light which is in you is not dark, is not darkness. If your whole body is filled with light, having no part of darkness, the whole body will be filled with light. As when the sh brightness shining of a lamp is given to you as a light, the Holy Spirit has come to you. So I mentioned something. Uh, it is very easy to miss when I talk about coexisting with demonic forces. A demonic spirit, uh, what he wants to do is attack your mind and then your soul and try to mess with your reasoning. Everybody do this with me real strong. I'm not receiving it. All right, right now, look at me, look at me. If something tells you to jump off the bridge, you gonna jump? That's the same thing when a spirit is trying to give an idea to you. An idea, in, in, in factuality, is a demonic force that is trying to get you to contemplate something that you shouldn't be contemplating. Ain't no death in the equation of your life. So I'm not receiving it. No lies are, like right now, if it's a lie, we just resist the lie. We didn't make up lies, we don't have to do that. We just stay in truth, that's where our benefit is. So here, and I'm just talking about, you'll see how easy it is to coexist. Demonic spirits would like to take over your understanding. So your understanding is tied to the natural and not to the supernatural. So we want to break that, that my understanding is not tied to the natural. How I feel, what I think, what it looked like. I want it to be tied to the word and the spirit. So when you're doing that, you're going to produce the victory. So demonic spirits would like to take us over, but because we don't have understanding of God. And we are allowed to open up doors. And here are the three doors that, that are generally for everybody. When I say coexist with spirits, they are all over the place. They're always moving around. But you got to guard your mind with all diligence. Like Philippians 4, 7 says, guard your mind with all diligence. The minute a thought come, I'm not looking for a thought I want to promise. Amen. Know the difference between a thought and the promise. The promise is scripture. A thought is, you know, a whole bunch of things. It can even sound positive. But you don't want to be dealing with thoughts and be rationalized. Why are you, ang why are you arguing with a thought? Have you seen somebody walking and talking to themselves? They're arguing with a thought. They walk in and all of a sudden the thing, something's telling them, you shut up. No, you shut up. <laughs> I rebuke you. I rebuke you back. <laughs> and, and, and everybody knowing here that wrestling with thoughts are just that simplistic. Have anybody ever got a negative thought? Everybody have. Ain't nobody existed. Satan tried to come to Jesus with a, a negative thought in Matthew 26. And so just because a thought come, it don't have no place in your clean kitchen. That's your spirit mind. When a thought come, you got to rebuke it. You're not going to make it. I rebuke you. I've already made it. Yeah. And you can't deal with a thought with a thought. You speak to thoughts. Here we go like, you know, you poor. No, I rebuke you, Satan. I say it out my mouth so he can hear it. I ain't going to try to think. He ain't hearing no thought. 
He give thoughts, but he don't hear thought, but he'll hear that word. And it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word. So when that fool come to your mind and he try to say, you know what? I shared this first service. Satan will show you your death. Am I lying? He'll show you, he'll try to show you pictures of you dead or something like that when he do rebuking. I got long life and good life. You can take that nastiness. Some of you trying to show you something foul. It's, it's something foul. Y'all don't want to see that. Turn that off. Get out of the way. Are you with me? Or a text message with some craziness. That's why I don't spend no time on that mess. Some of you, every time there's a mess. Why are you wasting your time on that mess, man? Put your mind on some scripture. Get what I'm teaching you to get home and study a little taste. You'll see just how far that is. That'll get... Have anybody ever had a piece of apple pie? Yes. Cherry pie. Huh? And if, if you see that thing come right out the oven fresh, have you ever seen a piece of pie coming out of the oven, that smoke, that steam coming up off of it? You'd be going like, all I need is a shot of milk right now. You'd be talking about one slice. You'd be, I'm going to knock that whole sucker down. But the, yeah, some ice cream. Two, three, some of y'all talking about a scoop. No, you are lying. You know you're going two, three scoops. <laughs> but here it is, here it is, though. The, the point is, the point that I want to make is that I don't care how delightful the idea or the intention of that pie is, you still got to chew it. And what happens in the church, we'll come in here and we'll keep the word on the intellectual level. The first level of the word come, it comes in a form of an intellect and then it gets into your spirit mind. And then from your spirit mind, you got to chew the pie and get it down into your system to, to even get it to the taste buds. it got to be some chewing involved. You just can't put it in your mouth up and swallow it. You're not an animal. <laughs> well, what about the word? Hold your Bible up. Very few people will come in here and believe in what I'm saying to the degree where you'll get this and study it after today. Some of the verses that I'm going to give you, if you meditate on those, it'll change your life. You'll never get to the spiritual place just sitting here and thinking you didn't grow. You're not gonna, you don't, growth don't come that effort gotta be in growth, right? If you're gonna lift and get big muscles, it takes the pumping the weights. We have to humble ourselves, and this is where humbling yourself is. You gotta humble yourself and stop thinking that your mind is so bright. Are you with me? I mean, there's times where you were almost at a point of a nervous breakdown, but you think you're smarter than God? And the only reason you ain't crazy today because God spared you? There are some people going to nervous, I know as a pastor, going to a nervous break and they never recovered. You, some, of, some of you, you have to humble yourself and stop thinking more of yourself than you are. You know, you really ain't got a whole lot to show. But yet, Satan still can deceive you that you, you don't need to study this. Until the devil come to your door one day and knock on that sucker. You're going to be trying to get all the help you can, but it might be too late. The situation might be too far gone. So we have to make certain, if you're trying to instruct somebody else, at least study the instructions you're given. All right, now put your Bibles down. Number one, when it comes to the devil trying to deal with, our, deal with us, he wants to deal with us and our, our mind, our soul, and our body. That's what he wants to do. He can't control your spirit. Your spirit has been given to you to do something with. The spirit is perfect. But a lot of times we don't advance our spirit past kindergarten. And it's like right now, if a kid is in kindergarten, 20 years later, they're still in kindergarten. That's a retardation. That's how the church is in a lot of cases. People hear these verses, they get it in their heart, but they really never take the time to humble themselves enough to study. That's why you don't get over into massive supernatural stuff. Some people be getting it, they get into massive stuff, and people be jealous because they're always talking. Well, if you do the same, you're not going to get into it. It's not because I know it. It's not because I'm smart. It's because I apply. Push the button. Ring the bell push the button. You got to apply. You got to apply it. You got to apply it. And I tell you to do that. He says, study to show yourself approved, a workman rightly dividing the word of truth. Not being ashamed of the gospel. You got to apply it. You got to take, in 24 hours, you telling me you can't take one hour to witness to somebody and another hour to study? And you still got 22 hours left in a day. You can see how Satan has marginalized our lives down to nothing. We don't even have time to give the, uh, the, devil, the Lord one hour, of, half hour of study, just a half hour of study, maybe a half hour of prayer in the morning, and maybe a half hour in witnessing. That's just one and a half hours to do three major assets in your life. That is done daily. That's not when you feel like it. 
Okay, so now let me watch this. So d this is what the devil like to do. Number one, depression. What depression is, is the entry level of your mind. Knock, knock. That's what depression is. He wants to bring thoughts, ideas, has uh, harassment, and things of the, of the world. He wants to bring it to your mind. That is the spirit of depression. When you see people depressed, they like it. Because it got to their mind, they, sometimes you can't figure out what the devil is doing, but you just, I feel heavy. I don't know what happened. I, I had my coffee. I went and got three shots of Starbucks. And then once he gets into your mind, then the spirit of oppression. Oppression is the actual specific things that he's doing to bring pain, stress, and, and, uh, and empowering to your life. Oppression is painful. Oppression is like somebody putting you in shackles and chains or putting a tight rope around your neck. That's, that's what he begins to do with your mind and your soul when, when you get oppressed. But before you get oppressed, the spirit of depression comes. And then you're trying to figure it out. Think about it, man. You know, as human beings, sometimes we, just in general life across the world system, we have not been that diligent at all. And so one of the tricks for people is to try to declare who you are without even measuring it the right way. You're judging yourself by yourself. And then if you look across the world, people your age and across America, just not even say, you could see that you're not all that you think you are. And so that's why you stay in, you stay in this. You keep pushing, keep pushing. Don't deceive yourself. See, the devil is an expert on deceive. When you think you one thing and you really ain't what you think you are. And so you can't be living on what you think and you should be living on what you... Yes, I'm living on what I know, not on what I think. Too many beautiful people are still living on what they think. And then somebody else is giving praise and thanking God and you're jealous. Hey, that's how they always talking. Well, why don't you talk? Let that person die. It shouldn't be the one person eating and eating good. Everybody should be eating good. Amen. Well, today I just, the Lord did this. And you know what? He's not a respectful person. If he did it for them, he can do it for you. Amen. But you got to apply, 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 apply. So th there's two things that are important. This is how uh, right now, let's say you're at home. Say I'm at home. I'm in, the in the kitchen. And then all of a sudden, now tell me I ain't telling the truth. You're sitting in there and you done got upset about something. Ain't nobody in the kitchen but you. You mad at them. You done got mad at them. And you going like, just walking around, stomping your feet. Have that ever happened to anybody? You can't tell me the devil. The devil got straight power. He going to let you defeat yourself. I done seen some people that tore up, tore their flat, snatched the snatch the, the flat screen off the wall. All of a sudden, here comes somebody walking on TV, and they, didn't, they, they, they weighed down, they look like they weighed us down. And why that can't be me? And snatch the screen off the table. <laughs> it ain't you, because you won't apply it. Every time I sit out, they got this spineless woman walking across the thing and snatch the TV off the screen. That's not right. And the devil, the devil by a spirit is messing with your mind. So everybody, we don't want to be coexisting with demons. Watch this. Every, you know, it's like even before you can give yourself a chance to do something, the devil is already telling you what you can't do. Is that the devil? You ain't gave God a chance. You ain't prayed or even spoke to it. I can't do it. Man, that's a horrible life to live. Because one day you might be in an emergency room. I want you to say it. I can't do it. Because if you deny God on the other things, he say this. You did this, but you left the other things undone. I don't leave nothing undone. So if you ever have to have your faith going, I didn't practice the tools he's given me to practice with. Same page? So just remember, these are the ways, the coexisting. That spirit of depression. He gets to your mind and he wants to bring oppression, put your actual shackles over the things that you've been thinking about and hadn't rebuked. And then possession, just straight possess your life. Everybody look at possession as this major complication of behavior attributes that are seen publicly. There are some people straight possessed by the devil sitting in churches, sitting in churches, especially if there ain't no Holy Spirit, there's no way to expose them. Have you, any, have you, how many of y'all heard the term a functioning alcoholic. Yeah. That sucker drunk and stank.
because you can smell that stuff in their skin. Don't think, you know, you're going to gargle your mouth, I can't smell you. You know, people think, you know, they didn't get, you didn't had your drink and it's Sunday and you want to come to church, but pastor might, the Holy Spirit might be on it and he might know I've been drunk. And you, you're going like this through the whole service. <laughs> and you gargled your mouth. But yet you could be in the parking lot and the Holy Spirit can smell you. Uh-uh. No, we just, you can't play no game with the Holy One. When I'm talking about actually functioning with demonic behavior, it's, it's the moment when you are making up your mind. The Lord tell you to come to church, but you say, I just can't. I just can't get with it. Who talking? Is that God? No. What's talking there? Spirit. And that happens with all of us, so you have to get in habit. This is what I learned. Every time he tried to tell me no, I say yes. Every time he tried to tell me what I can't do, I, I use my faith to do what he tell me I can't do. Because once I do what he tell me they can't do, there's always a major blessing, not just for me, but for others as well. So you, this is how to get the coexisting with the devil. Get that suck out your life. He don't mean you no good. He's a thief who come to rob, kill, and destroy. And, and, and Satan himself is linked to every demonic thought and every demon that want to come in and be at your crib. Every time at 2 o'clock, pastor, at 2 in the morning, I wake up punctual. That is a demon. Don't be happy about that. You need your full sleep. You're crazy enough. <laughs> You need your full sleep. And if, uh, you know, I'm up, I'm just up, I'm just praying in spirit. You ain't praying, you would sleep if you could. But you could, but you just take authority. I command in the name of Jesus, no principality, no stronghold, no demon is going to coexist in my life. I rebuke that thing in the name of Jesus. Like the Bible says, God has not given us a spirit of fear. I'm not dealing with no fear. Fear is like a lot of times they try to stand in front of your promise. I rebuke that demon. Get up out of here. Get up out of here. I command you, you get up out of here. You ain't going to be in here messing with me and my man. Get up out of here. Amen. Or me and my wife, get out of here. Or my family. You know, you're taking authority of thoughts that try to let, set a standard of life that's not even biblical. You shouldn't have no standard of life that's not biblical in your life. That's coexisting with a demon. So it's just some basic things. Never talk about what you ain't got. If my daddy got it, I got it. Amen. And pastors teach you enough faith to be able to speak what your daddy didn't gave you. We ain't the church of the lukewarm. You, you find a principle, principle after principle, if you study it. Huh? Yeah. Now, I just wanted to say that. Go to, let me, I'm going to show you something. Can I show you something? Go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. Go quickly. I'm going to show you something here. Ain't no way in the world. You thought, I just have my own free will. No, you, that's a demon. You run around letting a demon tell you, lying to you. You ain't... ain't when, when you got your free will, we are here to do the will of God. What you going to do, the will of your, your soul when you're three, or the will of God that I'm free? All right, now, 1 Timothy chapter 4. And verse 1, starting at verse 1. Now watch this. This is how them demons come in. All right, watch this. Look at it. Look at me. Look at me. Do you know people hate people without even meeting them? Am I lying? God got anything to do with that? But we can get into that. So don't sit here and talk about, I, Pastor, I'm, I disagree. I ain't got no demon. That's why you got a demon, because you're in disagreement. You're never hearing the spirit. You're hearing what your soul is satisfying your soul. Instead of just repenting and say, Lord, open, open my eyes. One of the things that the soul don't want you to do ever have right relationship with God. So he'll keep you in the spirit of conflict where you can't receive. Then you don't receive, you can't grow. First Corinthians, uh, uh, first Timothy, first Timothy chapter four. Now, now the spirit expressly says that in the lighter times, some will depart from the faith. Everybody look at me now. Departing from the faith don't mean you just quit. It's just you stop receiving. You come here, but you ain't receiving what I'm talking about by faith. I said, you're not receiving by faith. Anybody rich in here? Come on now. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. I said, wake up, wake up. God promised in 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, Christ took on poverty that you don't have to experience it. You want to be around the people that's talking about what God is doing. Girl, man, how you had that happen? I'm walking by faith. So put your hands down. So he says that in these last days, 
people take heed to different spirits and they stop walking by faith. If you stop walking, all of this stuff is obtained through faith. We learn the word, rightly dividing the word of truth, we learn it, and then we apply faith. That means you got to do it. Remember, I was talking to a dude the other day, and he was trying to quote to me verses. And I said, brother man, I said, brother man, you, you don't even got a driver's license. So that religious stuff, you can throw it in the trash. Do you know who you're talking to? You don't have credit. You don't have a driver's license. You ain't got no money. You ain't got no car. But you're going to try to religiously. See, that's where a lot of our kids and friends and family are jacked up because they're quoting stuff misquoted to you and you're letting it go. That ain't biblical. Get out of here. <laughs> well, what, what, how is that? It's, I'm telling you the truth. You in the flesh, you in the soul, and you're going to try to impose that over the truth. Don't let nobody do that. You're going to try to impose mess over the truth. You people are people of God, and, and I ain't never seen none of y'all trying to just bully nobody. We, it's not the kind of man we bullying somebody with a scripture. We generally say if you want it, you got it, but if you don't want it, you know, shake it. Shake it. Shake it. <laughs> Keep on moving. Now watch this. Going back in here, now that's too beautiful. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the lighter days, in the lighter time, some will depart from the faith, having heeding to deceiving spirits. What kind of spirits? Everybody, can I show you something? All right, keep your hand there. Everybody watch this. Deceiving spirits. Now I want everybody to go to uh, James, please. Keep your finger there and go to James. Keep on back towards the back of the book. Go to James chapter 1. I want to show you something. Verse 22. And then we're going to go back. I'm talking about deceiving. What did I say? Deceiving spirits. Look what it says. It says, and it says, uh, departing from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of devils. We're going to come back to the doctrines of demons in a minute. Okay, now watch this. In verse 22 of James, it says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your, deceiving your, if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, watch what this dude is like. A man observing his own face in a mirror, observing his, his natural face in a mirror, for he observed himself and goeth away and immediately forget what kind of man he is. So you straight tricked. The devil done tricked you. You finna run up there, run up in there trying to fool with, with the devil and think you fair false to somebody. <laughs> And the devil slap you across the head with his paw. You know, come on, man. All right, now watch this. Watch this. Now go back in one more time. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the last time, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of devils. Everybody watch this. Give me, let's, let's look at what are some doctrines of devils. What's a doctrine of a devil? Hate. hate is a doctrine. Who said that? Good, Janet. That's a doctrine of the devil. How in the world are you going to hate somebody you ain't never seen? Right. Satan is an expert in, because if you're walking around with that in you, you definitely got an oppression demon. That's a demon. That's a devil. And he will, he will get you somewhere. You run running up on the wrong person and lose your life. I've known people, they think because they heard from their parents, other people are down, other people are down, and they run up on somebody and you lose their life. You better not be running up on people. I'm stronger than you. My mom and them said we're better than you, and then they'll get your neck broke. <laughs> Everybody ain't for it. Or somebody shoot you in the head, you and your mama. You, got, you, you don't be fooling with people at home talking one kind of stuff and making yourself better. Than, you ain't better than nobody. You come from the dirt, you're going back to the dirt. But that's what people do with that doctrine. That's a doctrine of the devils. Satan did it from the beginning. If he can get angels to leave heaven, what about us around here on the, down on the street? Give me another doctrine of the devils. Lies. Who said that? There it is right there. Lust, perverts, and things like that. When you get in lust, everybody understand lust. Say lust. lust. It's not just sex. It's money, hair on your head, shoes on your feet. Am I right? Some drink. Can a person lust for some drink? Yes. Watch this. Watch this. Everybody look at me. Put your eyes on me right now. I have seen a bum bumming for a cigarette. Hey, man, can I get a smoke? I said, I don't smoke. 
and they on the ground looking for what the thing called when it's on the a butt. A butt, butt, like a butt? Okay. <laughs> they looking for a butt. They on the ground trying to pick up a butt. <laughs> I didn't know a butt was on the ground, but they tried to get a butt. But does that happen though? That's a doctrine. That's a demonic spirit. So doctrines of demons are things that are designed to change the course of our behavior from the will of God to the soulish desire. Got it? That's what that thing is designed to do, to get you so asphyxiated with the, the things that I need and want outside how God then promised it. Brother, you're not going to promise it doing it your way. You're not going to make it doing it your way. You'll always come up short and need something else. You can't make a good sandwich without no meat. But I got the bread, man, hey, man, can you help me, man? I got a piece of bread, and I, I even got some mustard, but I ain't got no meat. <laughs> Eat a mustard sandwich, <laughs> you know, but, but isn't that how that is? And that's what the devil wants to do. He wants to, you have all of these desires, and you're trying to achieve them outside of God's will. Baby girl, men and women of God, do it God's way. Amen. Humble yourself and do it God's way. Amen. Don't lie about it. Don't try to, just do it, just step by step by step. Do it God's way. And so let me go on down to this, this second category. And he say in verse 2, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience sealed with a hot iron, meaning that your conscience, everybody look, sealed, your conscience sealed, you're not open to God no more. Satan has sealed your conscience, and I'm talking, and everything I'm saying is going inside your head. You got to get delivered from that. Because you'll get to a place, you'll stop growing. And you, I could never stop growing. As great as Moses was, it wasn't until 80 until he got in his anointing. Abraham was 80, he got in his anointing. So we have room to grow, and now they were not under the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. We are. It shouldn't take us a lifetime to realize it may not seem to be a lot, but bam, you go home tonight or Monday and just sit back and go like, okay. All right, watch this. Did you bring notes? No, I didn't bring notes. Did you bring something to write with? I didn't bring. What do you, you, I mean, you kind of like playing with your mind, working your mind. You was in school and you barely got out of high school, just in the natural. You're coming in here to receive from me on the natural. You're not coming to receive the spirit because if you were, you'd be writing this stuff down, go home and challenge that old thing and get the new one on. You got a raggedy hat with holes in it. God want to give you a hat with some spirit in it but you're still practicing to get it the wrong way. When you was in school, you was always looking at the clock, trying to see when you get out there with your boys. Now some of your boys ain't got a degree, you still trying to tip. What is it gonna take you till you're 80 years old and wake up and change the system? I can't make it, but I'm gonna definitely tell you the truth. This stuff worked, but you got to apply it. Ain't nothing in the system how God created gonna get it just by getting it. Well, I said the verse. We know that James said you got to be a doer that verse. Now go back in, go back in, go back in. And he said, forbidding to marry, verse 3, forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from foods, which God created to receive with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. So we have these issues about different foods. And so you can eat what you want to eat, but if you're eating anything in fear and doubt, it's better not to eat it at all. And this is what he said in verse 4. For every creation of God is good. Nothing is forbidden if it is received with thanksgiving. If you're going to eat and you eat with thanksgiving, you're going and bless it. God ain't making you do nothing. Everybody look at me. Can, can, I, can I say something? Free me up. Can I say something? Yes. I said, can I say something? Yes. Well, you know, pastor, I can't eat that. I'm on a nutritional tip. You're 70 pounds overweight. And you're going to get in my face and start tripping to with me about some nutrition. Eat the food and go on to sleep. <laughs> Bless the stuff, eat and take yourself to sleep. You're starving yourself and making yourself sick. But you're going to quote me some nutrition. But that's the natural mind. I'm not putting nobody down, but ain't that how the natural mind is? Well, y'all y'all eat that. Y'all nasty. Bruh, check the mirror out. Grab the love handles. <laughs> the refrigerator, not the six pack, but the refrigerator, you know. But we're just working. But, but maintaining truth is not a negative thing, it's a good thing. Maintaining truth, maintaining truth. 
and, and, and just one moment at a time, just begin to apply. So you, you, you want to just be a studier of this. And like I said, forbidding for marriage, and what he's talking, he's not just specific forbidding to marry another man or a woman, but forbidding to allow the truth to have its full course in your life to lead you to victory. And so, and then he concludes by saying, and for, in verse five, for it is sanctified, everything we do should be sanctified by the word of God in prayer. By a stripes, I'm what? Yeah. So my life is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. Everybody say, I'm increasing. I'm increasing. If you're not decreeing that every day, it is a level of foolishness. This word only work if you speak it and live it. You got to get up every morning and like, like right now, give your wife a high five. Give your wife a high five. Up in there like this. Like that. Every morning. We having a great day. Bring some money in, girl. Bring that money back, baby. You bring some back, too. I'm going to bring some back, too. By faith. I ain't talking about our selling nothing. I'm talking about by faith. Give, give, give Vincent a high five. No, high, high five. We healed up in here. And bless. Got a little something for you when you get to the house. You know, you know, come on, you just speak some life. You understand what I'm saying? We do not enough that. Everybody remember this. Watch this. How many hours in a day? One hour worth of prayer, one hour worth of witness, another hour worth of study. Around the body of Christ, we would all get an F because we're not doing it. We don't want to study long and study wrong. We want to study according to the truth. Something. There ought to be something you got today that you go home and say, man, that Holy Spirit hit me with that. But if you're living out of your soul, you'll never hear what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Ten years from now, a whole lot of us have prospered and all kind of stuff happened and you still stuck. I'm not teaching nobody to get stuck. Amen. Days of stuck are over. Because yes. he said in St. John 8 and 32, the truth will do what? Make you, free. make you free from all stuck. Tell your neighbor, matter of fact, go on and look at him. I ain't stuck no more. Stuck on stupid, stuck on. Watch this. Watch this. Stuck on what? Stuck on stupid, stuck on broke, stuck on sick, stuck on poverty, stuck on hate, stuck on stuck on. Somebody stuck on, they stuck on. No more stuck on. So, anyway. Uh, watch this. I want to give you this and then we'll come to the last denomination here. Satan's power is to get demons into your life. And primarily he want to tell you, watch this. He want to tell you a lie. I'm sick. Uh, I don't feel good. I'm broke. I'm trying to get it together. You stop trying. I'm trying to get it. I got it together based on the promise. Are you all with me now? Not lying, but just speaking, knowing how to speak truth the right way. Not, not lying, but speaking the truth the right way. Are you all with me? It's so very important that we all learn. There's a way to speak faith and there's not a way to speak faith. I was just, I was just uh, reminded by the Holy Spirit. Uh, when Dante was a little boy, his mother would bring him to church. So I'd grab him by the head, not you, I ain't gonna grab you. Like I used to grab Myron. Myron got a real, he was a little, he had an extremely large head. Where Myron at? <laughs> Y'all tell that boy to stay in the sanctuary. I used to play with his head. His head was, I said, you're going to grow into this body. And he did. He about six, three or four, you know. But before when he was little, he just had, I, I used to go like, boy, big old head, boy, you retarded or something, you know. I'd just be playing with it. I'd kiss his head, everything. But, uh. So like different ones that I've raised in the ministry, I've spoken things to their life. I, like, uh, I tell them, girl, you are, you're going to be rich. And they end up being rich. I just speak in life, speak in faith, knowing how to speak faith. But I was down at Dante's graduation. Me and my wife was there down at Indiana University. How in the world I didn't spoke him into school and I'm not going to be there? And so I was there. And when he came around, now, what he did, he has not completed his doctorate until you finish the dissertation. You don't legally be saying that. You don't say it until you finish the, you, you actually become a candidate when you start the program and then you finish the, the classroom setting and then you can, then you are a, then you can begin to say, I am a candidate. You shouldn't be saying that like that until you are a true candidate for your doctorate and that's when you finished all your classes. 
and then the board or your whoever your uh, your your examinary person is that's on your board or on your panel they give you the credence they give you a written piece of paper so legally you can represent the university you shouldn't say that before and then uh, we were there at the graduation and it said Dante Miller candidate for his PhD but it was after he did everything it's not just saying anything and if you're gonna speak faith about that I decree by faith not I am you know so a lot of times we get into lying out of low self-esteem and craziness and you set yourself back, the devil will rip you off. You don't set yourself up out of low self-esteem, just run in your mouth. You, you do stuff decently in order where God can bless you because God ain't gonna bless no lie. And every university has a standard in which we progress. So you have to understand those things because, and that's in everything. That's even like, when I got that job, that's my job. You know, you gotta just, everything in order, right? All right so now watch this. The devil is a liar, and I said all that because he's a straight liar. He tried a lot of me, but you, you cannot be just making no lies up. All right, now go to uh, James. Did I say James? No, go to St. John. Go to St. John, everybody. Go to St. John. Uh-uh, the devil ain't messing with none of my children because I'm a daddy that love you, and I'm going to tell you the truth. Get that chump up out of here because you know what? I believe in the Lord. I'm believing the Lord for a billion dollars. Not for myself, but to be able to be a blessing. We'll set up more stuff than the Lord allow. Just the interest on the billion a, a month, that's enough to help. And, and I teach you how to help. I'm not teaching you how to do slave. You take, but you don't have no intention to ever help where you get your help from. No, we're going to keep learning how to be led in our help, not help because they need it. Well, my cousin, they broke. No, nah, that's the wrong one to get to. Give it to somebody that's trying. Why would I take tithe money and give it to a non-tither? Yeah, I'm sorry. I give you a little something. I buy you something. I ain't give you none of the kingdom money because God might dry all my stuff up. I need to be able to help my children. Amen. And my mind is made up. Now watch this. So we got to watch out for this right here. St. John 8 and 44. You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and he does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Look at me. There's truth in y'all. Yes. I trust you. There's truth in you. Yes. And it says there's no truth in him. And when he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources. He is the father of what? Yes. He is a straight father of lie. Y'all not. So that's how the devil try to mess us up. Go to 2 Corinthians 10. So if he come to your mind. Everybody, remember y'all heard me get that testimony when I first started ministry? Check this out. We used to have a prayer line. And it was a, a, a middle-aged lady. She came up. It was during, around this time of the year. She come up. And she walked up on me and she said, Reverend. That's what they used to call us, Reverend. She said, Reverend, pray for me. I'm believing the Lord for my husband today. I said, okay. What you want me to say? What you want me to pray? Want me to agree with you? Agree? She said, yeah, let me tell you the rest. I said, okay. She said, I'm going to the Raider game. <laughs> and all of a sudden, my eyes start going like this. Because God told me Marcus Allen is my husband. I said, oh, I just, my, I'm going like this dude is a young man out of high school. And if you ever met him in person, I mean, he's a, a handsome young man playing for the Raiders come out of SC, either he was a candidate for the Heisman or won it, and if you've been to college and an athlete, you know the availability of girls are, it's a lot. And then at SC, and then you're going to come, you're still limping a little taste, <laughs> running up on, God is not going, that is not going to happen. I said, that's not going to happen. I refuse to pray. I refused that prayer. I said, I'm sorry, I'm not praying that. That's crazy. You go ask one of them other people. I ain't praying that. Go on. I just, go on. Go on. Now, I pray for something else, but that right there, go on. Pray for me that I'm going to meet that Marcus Allen down there at, at the Raider game before he run in with 32 on. And I said, go on. The last time I seen him, I said, man, it looked like you could still play. He said, man, I'm retired. But the key is, is that we, we just have to, like, come on, man. For real? Second Corinthians. 
I don't want none of y'all to get in that spirit of lying, illusionary. Amen? Amen? The truth has made us free, but we got to apply the truth to get the freedom. Am I saying that clear? So he want to lie to our minds to get into our soul and to block God's promises. Everybody in here, we have equal ability to our daddy if you're just going to apply it. All of y'all are loved. It's not like I'm right, you wrong. No, we all are working this truth, eating on the same plate, at the same table, with the same spirit, with the same God who rewards those who will seek him diligently. Watch this right here, uh, 10. 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not what? They're not natural. Listen, everybody look at me. Y'all are too spiritual to be playing games. Y'all are, not, not only are y'all spiritual, you've got a strong spirit in the Lord. So we don't need to be playing no games. Just stay in truth and apply the stuff at work every day. I said work when? Every day. And so I said, we do not, uh, so it says, though we live in this earth realm, we, we live in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh, but the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they're not natural, but they're mighty in the pulling down of what? Amen. Casting down in your mind. Here it is, this is where the, this is where the oppression and, and this is where depression and oppression get started. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So you speak to that thing. The devil will try to show you some heinous stuff, but speak to that sucker. You hear me? You hear me? He, and I hear, something's going to happen. I rebuke, ain't nothing going to happen. I got long life, good life, and accidents and mishaps are far from me. I was, dry, I was telling him in first service, I'm driving this morning. I'm going through a green light. I'm on the phone talking to somebody here, I believe. I'm going through the light, and a dude is running the light. But it's like God slew that thing down and say, just kind of like, look at my protection for you all the time. I'm in the light. I'm going, what is this fool doing? I'm just looking. And I just kept on going. And he just letting you know in these kind of situations that you far from accidents and mishaps because that's what we pray. I pray that over all y'all, mishaps and accidents. Trust me, sometimes I see on occasions some of y'all out of, out of pocket. But thank God that he honor what I say. He put me here to honor because when you can't pray for yourself, the spirit make intercession for the saints according to the will of God. You better know something. Are y'all hearing me clearly? All right, now, last thing I want to give you today. Out of, the, out of demon spirits, there is a spirit uh, demonology. Or, uh, you know, it's like the, the, the birth of the activity of demons. It's a study of demons. People do that to try to get advantages. Uh, but what I want to talk to you today is that uh, when the devil is trying to get your mind to a place where he's able to control your ability to use the word to get where you're going, how do I take the next step is what? I, we take the next step by faith, right? Next step by what? And then the next step by what? Faith. Then the next step by what? Faith. Not through wishful thinking. And a lot of times Christians are into wishful thinking. We are not going to progress by wishful thinking. Anything in the future for us is by the word of God, hope and faith and the promise of the word of God. So in the Bible, there's this young girl. They call her a, uh, a slave girl. And what this girl was doing she was operating in fortune telling. Now, everybody listen, look at me. You may have never practiced fortune telling, but you practiced the principles. Every time you believe in God for something without the word of God, you're in fortune telling. You're trying, well, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. You, into, you should be tying the word to your future. God didn't promise me this, and I'm going to get it by faith according to the word. Well, man, I'm just going to have this over here. I'm going to do this over here. You can get into fortune telling. You're looking for the future without the authority of the word of God. See what I'm saying? And, and you didn't think you was fooling with demons. That's demonic. So this girl runs up on the apostle, and she was like, every time she see the men of God or you guys walking by, oh, that's a woman of God. She blessed. I know she blessed. She go over there, down there, down there. She was doing that all the time. 
and it was from the wrong spirit. Flattery is not necessarily from God. Encouragement is from God, but flattery is from the devil. What's up, bro? I know you up, you up with the Lord. I, ooh, praise the Lord. How you doing? Ah, ah. You got to know, like, you know what, praise? Thank you. Keep on rolling. And that's what he tried to do with those apostles. But they were men in the spirit, and they were trying to prove that they were something to draw them to her. And he got annoyed. He got teed off with that. And immediately he turned to that spirit, and then the girl's demon went away. She couldn't do fortune telling anymore because the power of God overrode that demon. So we don't need, like, I don't know if any of y'all are doing it. You're looking at the newspaper, looking at your sign. Oh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, 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 a Libra and all that. You're not none of that. You're a Christian. You better leave it alone because some of you are mad at me now. I can't have my sign. No. You can have it, but it ain't you. You want to talk about fortune telling, that's how you enter into those occultisms. Straight witchcraft. You, you're going to get into divination. These demons, that, that, the art of studying demons, you're going to get into that divination. You're talking about your future without the word. You ain't got no future without the word. Your future is based on the word, based on what you speak and where he didn't promise you going. And he promised you up and not down. He promised you healed and not sick. He promised you rich and not poor. But you got to stay with the word. It ain't going to happen with that. You're going to get into witchcraft with that. And she in here flattering. You didn't mean it, God. But you know what? You always have to watch what people are saying. She never mentioned Jesus. She was doing all that talking, never meant. They going in the way of salvation. Don't you know a cult's called it salvation too? What salvation are you talking about? If she'd have said they going the way of Jesus, she wouldn't have had no problem. But she got to talking about going the way of salvation some other way other than Jesus. And the apostle said he got deterred with that. He said, Satan, shut up and get out of here. And the girl lost her power. Like sometimes people, watch this, everybody watch this. Watch the shoulder on your hand, talking about, let me speak into your life. Nah, get on. Don't touch me. No, 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 no. Keep your hands to yourself. I hear you. Well, how you doing? I'm doing, I'm doing good too. You got to watch what you join yourself to. You can get what a spirit and you be thrown off for the next six years. Listen to, listen to people that are of wisdom. They didn't get what they get. They got what they got by faith. Why aren't you going to get, you supposed to exceed me and get past our family and get way up there. But you can't get it being silly. Almost said something else, silly. <laughs> Everybody go to Acts 16. Don't be letting no demons in. Divination is the practice of seeking knowledge for the future by an unknown source, spiritual source means, by the powers of darkness. We, our future is promised in the word. Not through some you know, that kind of, uh, don't, don't be doing, don't practice that way. And sometimes we do, we don't know, but now you know. No, well, you're going to have a great day. The Lord giving you a great day. You're going to make it, child, and the Lord going to have you make it. Well, you know, everything is good for you, baby. No, it's almost like we're still in glory from God. No, we're going to make it because of the Lord on our side. You're going to make it because your steps are ordained by Jesus. Not because of, you know, don't rob God of his glory. That was King, not you, not you. This is Joseph Festus, but King Festus. He got up there in front of all of them people and tried to take glory of what God was doing. He died in the face of these people and worms ate him up. He, the king, just dropped dead and the worms just came and started eating him up. There were some nasty worms. Them worms ate the man up because he tried to receive the glory from God. Give God his glory. I said, give God the glory. I said, give God the glory. All times. Now watch this, watch this. We'll come back next week on this, but I'm going to get started. Acts 16 and, and, and 16. Now watch this. Acts, Acts chapter 16 and then 16. Now it happened as when we, when we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us who brought her master much profit by fortune telling. Everybody look at me. Fortune telling don't have to be the, the full skill of it. It's when you displace what God has promised with your soulish stuff. Don't never be trying to say, well, look what mama did. No, look what God did for mama. Because other than that, you're going to get into demonology. 
uh, 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 what spirit is that? The spirit of divination. You're going to get into that. And so, 17, so the girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, these men are servants of the most high God and proclaim to us the way of what? So, she, so when, when people are talking to you, like the person was talking to me about a scripture and I had to check them, you broke, ain't got nothing, but you're going to try to quote a scripture and think I'm going to play it. I said, man, you all out of order. You don't live nothing you saying. You ain't got nothing to prove that that scripture worked. So you take that with your mama and them, but I'm not dealing with it. You need to change your ways. And I guarantee you that helped in playing with that man. And we do a lot of that with people. We play with them. You're not going to help those people. They're not going to progress that way. You have to be in truth with people. Whether they receive it or not, that's their problem. But I'm not, you're not going to be on my watch leaving thinking I signed off on some foolishness. Somebody can say amen to that. Now. And, so, and so this is what that girl said. Look what she said. Who proclaim us by the way of salvation. What does that mean? If she would have said the salvation through Jesus, another thing. But that was a general statement to get your attention. Don't do general rationalization. Do straight scripture. And this she did many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And, and he came out, that spirit, that very hour. And we'll read it later. But then her master was mad because she went to try to do some telling and there wasn't no working in the telling. Amen. Every one of you precious people have the authority over the devil. And it just come by just working the word. God bless y'all.